Okay, so we're going we're gonna to dive into the lesson now, and I'm going to go as fast as I can. So uh, we're in lesson 21, relapse. Is there anyone who didn't get a clipboard that needs one? Anybody else? I have one more. 50% off. Okay. Yeah, 50% off. So, uh, actually, we're not going to, we're not really going to talk about relapsing. We're going to talk about avoiding relapse because that's, right, that's what we want to do. Uh, you've heard Nicole and I say lots of times that relapse is not a part of recovery. It's a part of addiction, right? That's what it is. So, and I, those of you who have heard my story know that, you know, I, I know about relapse. I relapsed a whole bunch of times, but probably the most notable time is when I had 10 years clean. I had 10 years clean, relapsed, and went into an 18-year, yes, I'm old, 18-year <laughs> downward spiral. I should have died from OD more times than I can count, right? So relapse is no joke. So we're going to talk about tonight, what are the ways that we can prevent relapse? Because here's the thing, relapse doesn't happen in an instant. It doesn't. It happens subtly over time. And oftentimes, our sponsors or our accountability partners can recognize the red flags or the yellow flags in our lives and say, hey, I'm concerned about you, right? It doesn't seem like you're making your meetings or um, how, how's your daily Bible study going or um, uh, maybe you're hanging out some places you shouldn't be hanging out, right? We, we need people around us who can point out when we're starting to drift right off the path because eventually... If we continue to do that, we will relapse, but it happens generally slowly over time, not in an instant. I mean, we do, you know, occasionally it could happen in an instant, but that's really rare. So we're in principle seven, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. And step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And then the biblical comparison for that is let the message of Christ dwell in you richly. So we're going to dive right into our acrostic. Uh, the R in relapse stands for reserve. Reserve a daily quiet time. And we want to be really intentional, right, about what we do during that time. We want, to, we want to spend some time examining ourselves. And we want to do that, right, not just whirling around in our heads. We want to do that as we have God's Word open and we're exploring God's Word. We want to examine ourselves in comparison to God's Word. And we want to be prayerful during that time so that we can have spiritual wisdom and spiritual discernment. We're not looking to examine ourselves to beat ourselves up, right? That's not what we're trying to do. We're, we want to examine ourselves to be honest about our situation, to be honest about where we're letting God in and where we're keeping him out so we can let him in more, right? He, God wants to heal every part of you, but he can only heal the parts that you give him. We're, we're spending this time to know what God's will is, not just have him rubber stamp our will. Right? God doesn't own a rubber stamp, I can promise you. That's not how it works. <laughs> right? We want to we wanna spend this daily quiet time understanding what God's will is for us because it's super easy to slip back into negative thinking and negative self-talk and, and ways of behaving and hanging out with people we shouldn't hang out with and not going to recovery and watching you know, dumb stuff on TV. I mean, all of those things uh, can happen easily. So this... Uh, daily quiet time with God is super important. Super important. The first step in preventing a relapse is to admit that you will be tempted to relapse. Everybody is tempted to relapse, right? When Jesus was here, even Jesus was tempted, right? He was tempted too. We, we're not going to be free of temptation. We all will be tempted. And so we need to have a plan of how are we going to navigate that, so, and some of those plans are easier than others, right? Like, I know if I go to a bar, I'm going to be tempted to drink, so I don't go to the bar. 
right? I know if I go in the casino, I'm going to be tempted to gamble, so I don't go in the casinos, right? I know that if I'm not in God's word and I'm just in my head, that the way that I think and feel and behave is going to head downward to where I used to be rather than upward to where Jesus is. Those are all things that are super important. So we want to recognize that we will be tempted. Jesus said in Mark 14, 38, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So oftentimes, right, when, um, when working with people, I start to get concerned when I hear things like, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I don't need to go to very many meetings anymore. I'm good. Or maybe they're a year in. I don't struggle with alcohol anymore. I'm a year in and I'm good. Well, as somebody who was 10 years in and relapsed, I know how risky that is, how those kinds of ideas are super risky, right? I still, I'm, I'm almost nine years in again now, I still don't go to bars. I still don't go to the casino. I still don't hang out with people who are getting high, right? I just don't do that because I don't want to be tempted and have to deal with that. Temptation itself, though, is not a sin. It is a call to battle. If you're being tempted, right, to, to relapse, two things you should do right away. One, pray. Two, call somebody. Don't wait. Because if you want to drink, you could drink after you call them, but call them first, right? Temptation itself is not a sin. It's a call to battle. When we are tempted to fall back into our old hurts, hangups, and habits, right? We need to use the weapons that Jesus used when he was tempted. In Matthew 4.10, right, as Jesus was tempted, he said this, get out of here, Satan. Get out of here. The scriptures say, worship only the Lord God, obey only him. Your biggest weapon in avoiding temptation and in, in, in um, battling temptation is God's word and God's promises that are true for each of you. The E in relapse stands for evaluate. Evaluate. So you might remember in the last two lessons, we talked about this a bunch. We talked about our daily evaluation needs to include a physical evaluation, right? How am I physically feeling? An emotional evaluation. How am I emotionally doing? A relational evaluation. How are my relationships doing, right? If nobody wants to hang out with you, that should be a red flag. If nobody wants to spend time with you, you might want to take a look at what's going on. Why would that be? And then a spiritual evaluation. What is my spiritual help like? Pastor Rick Warren, who was the pastor at Saddleback Church where uh, Celebrate Recovery was started, suggests that we do a HEART, H-E-R-T, evaluation each day. And here's what HEART stands for. Are you hurting? Am I hurting? In any way, physically, emotionally, spiritually, am I hurting? Because if I answer yes to that question, then I need to recognize that's a potential trigger for relapse. If I'm feeling hurt, what do I need to do to work through that hurt? The E stands for exhausted. Am I putting in so many hours at work that I'm exhausted and I'm not able to function? Am I not doing the self-care that I need to do? Um, am I angry quickly? angry or angry just angry all the time i went for years when that's the only emotion i had was being angry i woke up angry i went to bed angry i was just angry and i used all the time am i angry am i feeling resentful am i holding resentments towards people and then the t is am i tense am i feeling anxious um all of those things are things that we want to be uh conscious of you know we don't want to become paralyzed paralysis by analysis but we do want to evaluate these things to learn to be honest about where we are and if we answer yes to any of these we want to use the tools that we've learned in recovery up to this point right and that will get us back on track in romans 12 3 to 17 it says be honest in your estimate of yourselves hate what is wrong stand on the side of good love each other be patient in trouble. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honorable. Being honorable doesn't mean that you do everything right, right? Being honorable means that you lean on the one who does, which is Jesus. Daily practice of step 10 maintains your honesty, 
and your humility, your honesty and your humility. The L in relapse stands for listen. Listen to your higher power, Jesus Christ. Listen to your higher power, Jesus Christ. I know that before I got into recovery, the only person I listened to was me. And that mostly got into trouble. So I know now in recovery, if when I'm trying to listen to Jesus, all I hear is a voice that sounds like my own, <laughs> probably not good. God's voice doesn't sound like mine. We need to take a time out from the rat race of the world. Listen to our bodies. Listen to our minds. Listen to our souls. And slow down long enough to hear God's direction. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, it says, Test everything that is said to be sure it is true. And if it is, then accept it. And in Galatians 6.4, it says, Let everyone be sure that he's doing his very best. For then he will have the personal satisfaction of work well done and won't need to compare himself with someone else. Please don't get caught in the trap of comparing your recovery to someone else's recovery. Your relationship with Jesus is not going to look just like someone else's, right? Trust that Jesus has you where you need to be. And then Isaiah 1.10, listen to the Lord and hear what he is telling you. The first part of step 11 says we sought through prayer and meditation to... What's the next word? Improve, right? So we already have a connection with God, but we're going to take that time every day to improve that connection. In principle three, we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over. In principle four, we confessed our sins. In principle five, we humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. And now in principle seven, to continue forward and not slip back, we're going to reserve a daily quiet time with Jesus. Right? When Jesus was here, he spent quiet time with his father. If he needed to do it, we certainly do as well. So I would encourage you to set a daily time. And if you need to, set a daily time with someone else. Right? That can hold you accountable. It can be super helpful. And then step 11 also uses the word meditation. And, and we're not talking about transcendental meditation or any of that the meditation that we're talking about is just simply slowing down long enough and being silent long enough to hear god's spirit speak to you and as you do this more with practice you will realize the value of doing this and you won't have to hear me talk about it anymore because it'll be just a part of your life all right <laughs> thank you appreciate that okay and then uh what is Hey, what just happened there? Time out. Okay, the A in relapse. <laughs> the A in relapse stands for alone and quiet time. Where's the confetti cannon when you need one, right? Alone and quiet time. And then all the other stuff I just said, just put that right here. Bam. Okay. All right. Uh, and then in Psalm 4610, it says, be still and know that I am God. When I first got into recovery, I was a hot mess. I mean, I, the first 12 days of my recovery, I spent locked in my house, phone turned off, saw no one, talked to no one because I was terrified that the next decision I made would be the wrong decision and I'd and, and everything would be lost. That little bit of hope that I'd gotten from hearing Jeff Wallace in jail and from my sister coming and talk to me, that little bit of hope, I didn't want to lose that. And so I thought if I just stayed locked in my house, I would keep it, right? Well, that wasn't really sustainable. So I realized, right, at day 12, I realized I have to, I'm gonna have to leave the house. And the first place I left and went to was the Celebrate Recovery meeting, but I went, armored with this verse i took a three by five card a neon pink three by five card and wrote in sharpie be still and know that i'm god psalms forty six ten, and i put it right on the back of my front door so every time i rocked out of my house it was the last thing i i read i don't have to be god i can just be still and know that god is god and so can you you can be still and rest in his goodness okay Yes. All right. <laughs> Whew, we're back on track. Okay. So 
Uh, one of the main things the enemy will try to use to divert you from having this daily quiet time with God is keeping you busy with good things. Not keeping you busy with sin, that's not necessary. Keeping you busy with good things so you don't spend time with God. Make it a priority that the first thing you do every day is spend time with God. Don't even allow good things to keep you so busy that you miss your appointment with him. Relationships only flourish when we put work into them, right? Like if I, if, I, if I say that I love you and I never talk to you and I never spend time with you, you're probably not gonna believe that I love you. And the same is true for God. If I say that I love God, if I say that I'm a follower of God, if I say that I wanna be in relationship with God, but I don't actually ever spend any time with him, that I'm probably not in a relationship. In Psalm 1, 1 through 3, happy are those who find joy in obeying the law of the Lord. They study it day and night. They are like trees that grow beside a stream that bear fruit at the right time. God will bear fruit in your life if you trust Him and lean into Him each day. All right, the P in relapse stands for plug into God's power. Through prayer. You don't have to do this on your own. This is not a self-will program. It's a program of trusting God and His power through prayer. question that you should ask yourself each day, is there any part of my life I'm not inviting God into? Is there any part of my life that I'm excluding Him from? And you should probably talk to someone about that. Sometimes we think it's our job to give God instructions. Hey God, I need you to do this. When what we really should be doing is saying, hey God, what is it that you would like me to do? We should stop demanding things of God and start asking things of him. Specific prayers that keep us plugged into his power. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. I James and I do a Bible study four days a week in the morning at 7.30. I think I've complained about that to you guys before, right? It was 8.30, and then James said, I need it to be 7.30. Okay. So it's at 7.30, and, and we take turns. So one day he'll pray, and the other day I'll pray. And so he, I'm always, I always appreciate that he starts his prayer with, God, thank you for today. Thank you for waking me up today. Thank you for this opportunity to study your word. James always starts his prayers with me, at least, thanking God for how he's answered prayers in the past and uh, being grateful for the things that God is already doing in his life. Let's look at the S. I'm going to try to wrap us up here pretty quick. Slow down long enough to hear God. We said this about three different ways because it's super important. Slow down long enough to hear God. Because he's trying to talk to you. After you pray to him, just be silent. Two, three minutes. Just be silent and just see what he might have to say. He said this to Job, right? When he was talking to Job, Job was going through some major struggles. And God said to Job, hey, listen to me. Keep silence and I will teach you wisdom. And then Philippians 4, 7, the Apostle Paul writes, if you do this, present your request to God, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and hearts quiet. Who would like to have a quiet heart? I would. And at rest as you trust in Jesus. As we learn to trust in Jesus more, we get to rest more. I, I ran, right? I ran using meth for, I don't know, over 30 years. I'm ready to rest a little bit. I need some Jesus to be able to do that. So finally, the last letter in relapse is the E. Enjoy your growth. Celebrate your victories. Share your victories with each other. Right? We, you know, Nicole and I try to be goofballs, make you guys laugh a little bit, because sometimes you're just way too serious. Right? Enjoy your growth, right? Yeah, enjoy your growth. We want to celebrate your growth. We want to celebrate your successes with you, right? God is good, 
and we want to be reminded of his goodness. So uh, we're going to wrap up here with a, just a couple practical things to recap. If you want to write them on the back, you can. So here's a few things. One, pray and read your Bible every day. I mean, nothing will change your life more than that. Main, make attending your recovery meetings a priority, especially Monday night at Springfield. <laughs> spend time with your family if they're safe, right? If they're not safe, spend time with us. We'll spend time with you others than on Monday nights. We do all kinds of, we're fun. We do all kinds of fun stuff. We want to, right, there you go. Uh, and get involved in service. I, somehow I didn't have that announcement on the slides, I'm not sure, but we need you. We need your service, right? There's lots of things to do overnight. If, there, if the worship team wants to come back up. So if you want to not relapse, who wants to not relapse? Okay. Spend daily quiet time with God, reading his word and, his, and, and prayer. Yay.